Guten Morgen, meine Kollegen und Kolleginnen und äh, Jessica, Felicitas und Anna. Ich danke euch herzlich für die höchst freundliche Einladung zu Köln. Okay. This time of the year is always so deeply dark back home, if, 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 if not entirely gloomy in Finland that you simply cannot resist any kind of invitation to draw closer to the normal daylight. <laughs> For so many reasons, uh, I'm glad and happy to be here today and uh, to have the rare opportunity to share with you some of my ideas about the interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary narrative theory and the narratives of the third millennium. I could just just my short bibliography. I said my own disciplinary background is, is in sociology and political science. Even though I now seem to work more closely with the literary theorists. After spending my 1970s <coughs> in the radical leftist student movement. Uh, I wrote my dissertation on the same movement by collecting autobiographical interviews <coughs> from the former student activists. At the time of defending my thesis in the mid-90s, uh, uh, I still identified myself as a biographical scholar, and, and this, still this bi biography and society is still a, a prominent research group within the sociology. But soon afterwards I realized that the new emerging field was more broadly about narrative. And I started to read narrative theory uh, uh, across disciplinary borders. <coughs> and in 2003 I received the, my first funding for my uh, lifelong research project, The Conceptual History of Narrative, which eventually forced me to start reading literary theory, literary narratology, and all the classics of uh, social and philosophical theory of narrative. Uh, in a way, I became a voluntary dilettante within several many disciplines. Uh, and if I presently had to characterize my overall research program or orientation, I would probably use the term decamping to narrative studies. Galen Strawson in 2004, in his fierce attack against narrativity, used a very helpful term, narrative camp. Strawson carefully constructed a homogeneous camp uh, as his opponent, presuming that the camp members would share and defend all the basic tenets he, he, he then criticized. And later, Strawson's critics typically swallowed the hook and started to duly defend the camp against uh, the, uh, the un very unfair attacker. And I, I rather think that the serious challenge would consist in the wider critical reflection of the narrative studies of, and in defending the tenable ideas, not any narrative camp as such. But now to the socio-narratology. The idea of socio-narratology is not exactly new. Because right after the beginning of the project of structuralist narratology, Roland, Roland, Roland Part uh, declares how all classes, all human groups have their narratives, employment of, uh, enjoyment of which is every so often shared by men with different, even opposing cultural backgrounds, and how Narrative is international, transhistorical, transcultural. It simply 
it is simply there, and the famous ending, like life itself. There's no word about limiting the analysis exclusively into literature, fiction, or the artistic. However, the structuralist orientation of the classical narratology and uh, especially the, the, uh, the idea of uh, structuralist linguistics as the model science for the study of all narratives meant that the early narratology focused on the forms of narrative or more precisely on the structural conditions of possibility for narrative meaning making, <coughs> not on the interpretation of narrative meaning making as such. And following the structuralist reading of Vladimir Propp's The Morphology of the Folktale, many narratologists wanted, in fact, to reveal the narrative grammar. Which, is, which was supposed to underline and give meaning to all instances of narrative. Uh, all empirical narratives just were instances of this deep, deep grammar. Occasionally, you can still encounter the term the narrative structure as a collective singular as if signifying something permanent, clear, and really existing. Of course, narratives and narrative genres can and must be studied from the standpoint of structure. But I still insist that the abstracted and universal narrative structure does not exist at all, that the term rather indicates a category mistake. Quite clearly, the project of structuralist narratology had no great hermeneutical interest. Therefore, when the narrative turn in the social science, sciences was launched in the early uh, uh, 80s, the relationship with the old narratology was both distant and, and very selective. Elsewhere, I have claimed that narrative was often accepted as a useful metaphor for most various phenomena ranging from communication to life itself. You could, so many phenomena could, were able to be narratives in, in the spirit of the 1980s and 90s. What is meant, for example, was that there was no strong methodological or theori theoretical con continuity between those two projects. And in, uh, what's amazing, I think in particular, uh, Gerard Genet nev has never properly arrived at the side of the social research of uh, narratives. Nevertheless, the 1980s classics of the narrative turn, such authors like Jerome Bruner, Donald Polkinghorne, or uh, Kenneth Gergen, all had studied to some extent the works belonging to the classical narratology, translate, trying to translate some of the ideas into psychology and social research. But at some point of time in the 90, 1990s, the new project of the narrative turn, so to say, became entirely uh, uh, self-sufficient. Sociologists and psychologists, generally speaking, stopped altogether discussing literary narratology, only, only possibly recognizing some works that, which were published uh, uh, at least 20 or 30 years ago. This is the, the ridicule, ridicule of interdisciplinarity. We, we uh, honor the, the past heroes of other disciplines. Okay, that's another story. But it was enough to refer to such philosophers as uh, um, 
uh, McIntyre and Paul Ricoeur and the new classics of uh, narrative psychology or sociolinguistics. The new generation of narrative scholars seems, seems sometimes to search more keenly for the legitimation and defense of the new approach than for any systematic theory. It's, it's really not difficult to find such identity building literature for the narrative camp containing all the necessary quotes about the storytelling animal and how we all are living out uh, narratives and so on and so forth. The characteristic reason behind the rejection of narratology <coughs> among the social, uh, social scientists was their straightforward claim. I am not interested in the narrative form, but only in the narrative content. If this claim is translated in the Genetian, uh, language of Genetian narratology, uh, this claim reads like, I'm only interested in the story events and not at all the telling or the narrative discourse. Okay, when the literary theorist David Herman coined the new term of socio narratology in, in 1999, the landscape of narrative studies was indeed sharply uh, and oddly divided. Social scient scientists, in most cases, had stopped reading literary narratology and had started to de develop various phenomenological, post-structuralist or Labovian ways of reading uh, uh, narratives. Narrative, in most cases, was indeed understood as one new methodology among the versions of qualitative so, uh, the social research. At the same time, on the other side of the border, literary scholars had increasingly renounced the purely formal approach to narrative and had started to work with rhetorical, ethical, feminist, cognitive or natural versions of narratology. Whatever with, we now think, for example, of Monica Flodenick's 1996 book, Towards a Natural Narratology. It's somehow astonishing how it took almost 15 years or years before social scientists even started to recognize the ex existence of the, or relevance of the book. Yet, Flodenick had made a major attempt at establishing everyday oral narratives as the central source of narrative theory. The social research and narrative was given a, a central position in narratology, yet the social scientists did not bother noticing the whole event. In other words, the literary narratology was already something entirely different than what the classics of social uh, narrative theory had presumed and what the social scientists believed it still to be. For me, the, the, the story is a, a sad example of effects of rigid uh, disciplinary porters. In his original proposal for socio-narratology, Herman emphasized two points. Firstly, narratology would uh, benefit from renouncing its one-sided commitment with the Sasurian linguistics and from drawing more actively from sociolinguistics, pragmatics and the, North, and the North American theory of language in general. And Herman specifically d discusses William Labov, Labov's sociolinguistic theory of narrative as an diff entirely different approach to the language of narrative. Secondly, he, he continues, arguably though, what I shall call the Labovian model can came 
gain both descriptive and explanatory adequacy if it's enriched with the resource tools developed first under the auspices of narratology. <coughs> and the first major uh, contribution uh, to the Labovian model would be, Herman suggests, the distinction between story and discourse. And believe me, this 95, at least 95% of social scientists talking about narrative still don't make this distinction. Okay. And the second is the re-description re of certain entities of the story as narrative actants. The first proposal I still f re find recommendable. The second one is, in contrast, is as a more or less dubious move back to st structuralism. And, uh, and I, it took, I, I think, three years from Herman to chase, change his position, and he dropped it in 2002. And uh, Herman discusses the Labovia model in, in a helpful way, pointing out the difficulty of <coughs> imposing or impossibility of making an absolute distinction between narrative clauses and evaluation. However, eventually, the article remains fairly thin as regards social research, while only drawing from the Labovian sociolinguistics. And as a consequence, in terms of indicating the more generic merit, merits from the uses of narratology for the social research of narrative, or in other words, for the interdisciplinary narrative theory. One of the problems in terms of uh, genuinely interdisciplinary narrative theory was Herman's earlier very strong commitment with the fl then flourishing cognitive narratology. Because within psychology, discursive and narrative orientations were really fiercely criticized and attacked by the cognitive theorists and vice versa, making Herman's approach, uh, uh, Herman's approach more than difficult to adapt within narrative, narrative psychology. And, and now it's telling that uh, Herman uses in the title of his most recent book the much more inclusive term, the sciences of mind, uh, clearly indicating, including uh, for example, the philosophy of mind as well, uh, different psychologies and <coughs> along cognitive science. So Herman is dropping the uh, kind of the cognitivist rhetorics. Arguably, Herman's so far profoundest contribution to socio-narratology is, to my mind, his basic elements of narrative. And as is well known, Herman su summarizes his basic elements into the four central themes. Uh, firstly, claiming that narratives are situated representations. Secondly, saying that these representations cue the interpreters to draw inferences about a, a structure, time, course of particularized events. Thirdly, pointing out that the rep represented events always include some kind of disruption and equilibrium in the, uh, dis uh, in the story world. And finally, that the prototypical narrative also includes the experiencing consciousness foregrounding the pro processes of mind. In mind reading, this model is not at all uh, normative. For example, narratives that post postpone the queuing of any clear structure, time course, or events may sometimes, uh, if not always, be the most interesting ones. Signif significant narratives do not need to be prototypical 
Rather, these elements of prototypicality <coughs> open divergent perspectives into reading narratives. Nevertheless, I'm convinced that the model is able to characterize aptly, for example, uh, the narratives that are best able to become politically and socially effective. The first point, the situatedness of narration, clearly inscribes the con uh, contributions of sociolinguistics, discourse analysis and conversation analysis, and foregrounds uh, similar <coughs> sociological, uh, sociological themes as the theory of narrative environments elaborated by the sociologist Chaper Kuprium and James Holstein. The third element of disruption <coughs> draws equally from narratology as well as from the work of Jerome Bruner, Bruner's theory of canonicity and preach. Of course, fiction, let us think, for example, Samuel Beckett, is of course less dependent <coughs> on the story world disruptions, often simply because readers' expectations can be purposefully disappointed and resisted already on the level of discourse. Well, let's be careful here. I'm not at all <coughs> inclined to argue that this model, which uh, I represented in a rather simplistic and crude form, would be the most ingenious or even adequate in reading all kinds of narrative. Generic specificity is always a necessity. It's quite credible that the uh, study of fictionality, fiction, fictionality and experimental narratives, experimental narratives <coughs> need many other, possibly even entirely in, uh, different strategies of research and versus of narrative theory. I'm not a passionate believer in big unitary theories in any field of research. Nevertheless, please let me still outline my defense of socio-narratology in the follow following way. Over the past 15 years, we have witnessed several versions of narratology. Cognitive narratology ha had its heyday already 10 years ago and is currently both increasing, increasingly criticized <coughs> and sometimes renounced. Natural narratology, in some cases, became almost a synonym for socio-narratology, yet, to my mind, advocating slightly different ideas and rep representing different co cognitive commitments, which again were criticized by the project of unnatural narratology. A narrative theorist have recently debated the issue whether there should be only one <coughs> unifying theory for fictional and everyday narratives, such as the natural narratology, uh, suggested by Monica Flodenik and developed by David Herman. <coughs> or should we need clearly separate theories and, and narratologies, <coughs> as many unnatural and other narratologists claim. I resist the temptation to choose my side in the argument. In contrast, I'm afraid that the whole competition between unifying and separatist theories uh, is or might be somewhat displaced. I rather think that researchers of fiction and researchers of conversational narration can equally benefit from both separatist and unifying perspective, depending on the particular phenomenon under investigation. For example, one of the most prominent unnatural narratologist 
Henrik Skov Nielsen from Aarhus uh, has recently focused <coughs> on the study of fictionality. However, he is in practice very keen on finding the aspect of fictionality in many non-fictional and conver conversational genres, such as political discourse as well. <coughs> so to me, these are necessary and com complementary moves of, of perspective in narrative research, pursuing both the adequate disciplinary and area-specific sens sensitivity and the generation of new ideas about the role of the narrative ways of sense making in human life. Uh, so for this reason, I want to defend the relevance of socio-narratology as a project indicating transportation of narratological ideas, theories, and questions into social research, and vice versa. And I prefer to have my socio-narratology without any commitment to the theoretical, theoretically hazy naturalness. The choke, the dream, and the psychotic delu delusion actively contribute to the everyday un unnaturalness and experimentation. I also find the connection between socio-narratology and cognitive narratology merely contingent. Ideas may be shared, tested, and rejected without trying to embed socio-narratology to an all-embracing uh, all cognitive theory. Uh, and, and, well, David Herman has changed his mind in this issue uh, equally. What inspires me most profoundly in this overall period of post-classical narratology is its amazing theoretical richness in conjunction with detailed textual analysis. And now, the situation within the social research of, of narrative seems to me suffer from the absence of corresponding theoretical pools. In last June, I, I was attending the Narrative Matters conference in Paris, very nice event, and its conclusion panel, which tried to discuss whether narrative work is cumulative or not. One serious problem, according to the panelists, was the meager amount of citations that good narrative articles were able to invite. The narrative work, in other words, showed very low amount of accumulation. And I think that the problem resides at least to a relevant amount, degree, in the absence of theoretical focus and ongoing theoretical debate on, on the social theory of narrative. Narrative analysis, as Catherine Kohler Riesman says, in a pro prominent textbook, is case-oriented. And I, I think this is the quandary of being a methodo methodology. I mean, narrative studies understood as a methodology. A way <coughs> to endless diversity and, and to com com competition with other possibly more rigorous technologies of interpretation. Well, I, I just want to mention uh, such huge and, and at least to me hugely exciting themes as folk psychology, narrative as a methodology of creating and understanding one's mind or why not the re-legitimation re of the theme of the mind in the first place or the research strategy for that uh, Herman outlines as follows. Using ideas developed 
by narrative scholars to investigate stories as a resource of sense-making. This sounds to me to very much like the study of narrative realities. Jaber Kuprium and James, uh, James Holstein have suggested. <coughs> well, when all this is <coughs> said and done, we can ask whether the socio-narratology exists at all or not. Well, my answer is hesitant but positive. Of course, we have such interdisciplinary projects as this event, uh, as the research center in Narare in my own university, and such journals as particularly the story worlds, which are particularly dedicated to disciplinary border crossing. And in actual uh, research, I think that they are few uh, as excellent examples as the work of the German linguist cum narratologist Charmila Mildorf. But m most of all, I still consider uh, so socio-narratology as a prospect, a new chance not yet properly realized. So I guess we have a lot to do. Thank you.